In this lecture, we are going to show a standard derivation for the convergence rate of the secant method, the only difference here being the manner in which we present the derivation, which will be in video format. Let a sub n be the secant obtained by the secant method for approximating the exact solution x equals r of the equation f of x equals 0. Suppose that f is differentiable up to arbitrary order with both f prime and f double prime never equaling 0. Let e sub n be equal to a sub n minus r, and let l be equal to 0 0.5 f double prime of r divided by f prime of r. Under the assumption that the sequence a sub n converges to r, we are going to prove that the limit of the absolute value of e sub n plus 1 divided by the absolute value of e sub n raised to the fifth power equals the absolute value of l raised to the phi minus 1th power where phi is the golden ratio, the quantity the square root of 5 plus 1 divided by 2. This limit statement also means that the absolute value of e sub n plus 1 behaves like the absolute value of L raised to the phi minus 1th power times the absolute value of e sub n raised to the fifth power for large values of n. For the derivation, without loss of generality and to simplify the notation, we will assume that both L and E sub n are greater than zero. Before we get started with the derivation, let us first review the secant method. If A sub n plus 1 is the n plus 1th estimate for the root x equals r, then A sub n plus 1 in terms of A sub n and A sub n minus 1 is given by this recursion. We expand f of a sub n using a Taylor polynomial of degree 2 around x equals r. f of a sub n equals f of r plus f prime of r times the quantity a sub n minus r plus 0 0.5 f double prime of r times the square of a sub n minus r plus the third degree error term. f of r equals 0 since x equals r is the root of the equation f of x equals 0 a sub n minus r equals e sub n and so f of a sub n equals f prime of r times e sub n plus 0 0.5 f double prime of r times e sub n squared and then we have the error term. The error term given by the Taylor series formula equals f triple prime of some value c divided by 3 factorial times the cube of e sub n where c is some value between a sub n and r. Under the assumption that the sequence a sub n converges to x equals r, e sub n also tends to zero so that if n is large enough, e sub n should be quite small. And so the error term which behaves like the cube of e sub n will be smaller than the other terms of lower order in e sub n so that we obtain this approximate equation for f of a sub n by disregarding the smaller error term. Applying the same idea to f of a sub n minus 1, we get a similar approximate equation for f of a sub n minus 1, this time in terms of e sub n minus 1. In the secant method recursion, we subtract r from both sides. a sub n plus 1 minus r equals e sub n plus 1. a sub n minus r equals e sub n. And we replace f of a sub n by its Taylor approximation. We subtract r from a sub n here and add r to minus a sub n minus 1 here so that the numerator is actually e sub n minus e sub n minus 1. In the denominator, we replace f of a sub n and f of a sub n minus 1 by their respective Taylor approximations. When writing the quantity on the right side of this equation into a single fraction, the product of this quantity and e sub n cancels out with the product of this quantity and e sub n. The two products have the same exact two factors except for the change in sign of one of the factors. And so the two products cancel out. We retain the product of this quantity with minus e sub n minus 1. The same goes for the product of this quantity with e sub n. 
therefore we have this formulation for e sub n plus 1. Upon multiplying out the numerator, the terms involving f prime of r cancel out. So this is what we get for the numerator after factoring it out. With the assumption that e sub n is already quite small, this f double prime term will be small in absolute value compared to f prime of r, which is non-zero. And so we drop the f double prime term. We apply the same idea, this time to e sub n minus 1, so that again we disregard the f double prime term, this time involving e sub n minus 1. And so e sub n plus 1 is approximately equal to this fraction. The quantity e sub n minus e sub n minus 1 cancels out, so that for large values of n, e sub n plus 1 is approximately equal to this quantity, or that e sub n plus 1 divided by the quantity e sub n times e sub n minus 1 is approximately 0 0.5 times f double prime of r divided by f prime of r. This quantity is, of course, the constant L. At this point, we mention an alternative derivation for the rate of convergence of the secant method. If we assume that e sub n plus 1 is approximately some constant k times e sub n raised to some exponent alpha, and if we assume that e sub n is approximately equal to the same constant k times e sub n minus 1 raised to the same exponent alpha, then we can use this system of equations along with this equation to solve for alpha and k we simply have to justify these assumptions. On one side of this equation, we multiply and divide by L, and then cross multiply to get L times e sub n plus 1 is approximately L times e sub n times L times e sub n minus 1. Even without assuming that both L and e sub n are greater than 0, one can show that for large values of n, L times e sub n plus 1, L times e sub n, and L times e sub n minus 1 are greater than 0 with appropriately chosen starting values for a sub n. There is a video that we had previously posted on the secant method. In that video, this fact was a consequence of the derivation for the case where both f prime and f double prime are positive. The video, however, does not mention the three other cases, but they can be dealt with in a similar fashion. The three other cases are where 1, f prime and f double prime are both negative, 2, when f prime is greater than 0 while f double prime is less than 0, and 3, f prime is less than 0 while f double prime is greater than 0. We have posted the link to that video in the comment section for reference. The viewer can fill in the details of the proof for the last three cases as an exercise. We take the natural logarithm of both sides. We get the natural logarithm of the product of L and e sub n plus 1 is approximately equal to the natural logarithm of L times e sub n plus the natural logarithm of L times e sub n minus 1. And so the sequence the natural logarithm of L times e sub n behaves like a Fibonacci sequence for large values of n. There is a fairly well-known formula for the terms of a Fibonacci sequence. According to that formula, the natural logarithm of L times e sub n is approximately equal to some constant a times the quantity the square root of 5 plus 1 divided by 2 raised to the nth power plus another constant b times the quantity the square root of 5 minus 1 divided by 2 raised to the nth power. This quantity of course is phi. The viewer can verify that this quantity is the reciprocal of phi so that the natural logarithm of L times e sub n is approximately a times phi raised to the nth power plus b times phi raised to the minus nth power. The natural logarithm of L times e sub n plus 1 is also approximately equal to a times phi raised to the n plus 1th power plus b times phi raised to the minus n minus 1th power. Or approximately phi times a times phi to the nth power 
plus b times v raised to the minus n minus 1th power. In between these two terms, we add and then subtract phi times v times phi raised to the minus nth power. Observe that the first two terms of the right side add up to phi times the natural logarithm of L times e sub n. Converting the last equation into an exponential equation, L times e sub n plus 1 is approximately equal to this quantity. These exponents tend to zero as n tends to infinity. And so the limit of e sub n plus 1 divided by e sub n raised to the fifth power is L raised to the phi minus 1th power. This also means that for large values of n, e sub n plus 1 is approximately L raised to the phi minus 1th power times e sub n raised to the fifth power for large values of n. Therefore, the convergence rate of the secant method is better than linear or the first power, but not quite quadratic or the second power.